Well, let's start off on the currency front this morning because yes. looking at the movement we're seeing there, what are you making of the kind of weakness that's filtered through all-time lows of 86.75 having been hit yesterday? Uh, I see nothing that's going to that's going to support the currency. I think the shilling bulls energy has been sapped. I think we're headed straight to 90, uh, barring a few short covering rallies. And really, this is the biggest alarm bell I have about the Kenyan markets at the moment. These are levels we've never seen before, even during the 1990s, when it, at times we were a pariah state uh, when it came to the IMF and the World Bank. So it's, it's looking very bearish on the shilling front, and uh, I really see nothing to support it at this time. I think the central bank, uh, the rate cut that they, they put through uh, two months ago was, uh, was absolutely wrong. They're behind the curve. People need to see some kind of uh, stiffening of the central bank spine when it comes to interest rates. But ultimately, I think they're on the sidelines and we're watching an under-the-radar devaluation. It's interesting that you mention that because to what extent mm. can we read the weakening of the shilling as a repricing of Kenyan risk after the remodeling yep. of the inflation basket that saw inflation uh, coming in lower and with it that central bank's drive to cut interest rates uh, to match that lower inflation number? Isn't the market simply correcting an underpricing of Kenyan assets risk? I, I, that's an interesting point you're making and there's also an argument that the inflation rate is still overstated because the communications element in the inflation basket is 3% when it should be around 15%. But that aside, that's a technical issue and uh, the inflation rate is probably a little bit lower. But uh, that aside, I think the repricing of Kenyan risk is a political repricing. I think uh, the domestic signaling around the ICC process has looked incredibly dysfunctional overseas and abroad. And I think that's led to people looking at Kenya again and now being worried about the, the, the response to the ICC and then the 2012 election. FX markets are the most deep and liquid all over the world. And this is practically a democratic vote on the political process at the moment. Mm -hmm. Of course, globally, we've also got uh, yeah. investors chasing yield. And uh, with yeah. that, you know, as you've highlighted, we've seen the Kenyan mm. Central Bank uh, cutting back on interest rates. You know, for example, where South Africa can never cut uh, interest rates, some say, to the same level as the U.S. or Japan uh, because of the risk of capital flight. Is this, to an extent, what we're seeing already playing out in Kenya right now? Y Yes, in part. Our, our, our rate structure is not attractive. Um, uh, you know, they are, they, uh, South Africa is probably a better risk reward uh, than the Kenyan shilling at the moment. The government of Kenya has seen interest rates come considerably lower, um, but you know, that is not transmitted to the real economy. And I think international investors are not as attracted by our interest rates, given the inflation environment, the fuel story, which looks as if it will still go higher. And generally, the, the, the slower slowdown we're seeing via a lack of tea sales into Egypt. So where the shilling has lost, what, roughly 6% mm. this year against the dollar, and we've had Central Bank Governor Njigun and Dungu reiterating that there will be no uh, intervention from the Central Bank mm. side to support in uh, the shilling moving forward. Should they be intervening at this stage? You mentioned the possibility of possibly getting stiffer on the interest rate front. What in your books should be implemented there? Well, I, I think actually the central bank is the biggest seller of the shilling. Um, if you look at what they've done all last year, this year, they're the biggest buyer of hard currency. And, and unless they, you know, they are the outsized player. So it's a little bit disingenuous to say that uh, they, are, they are impartial. They're actually continuing to buy hard currency and putting further pressure on the shilling. Whatever they might be saying, you've got to look at what they're doing and not what they're saying. Yeah. And that's what concerns me. And I don't think they have uh, the capacity to turn this around right now. And it seemed to me his latest comments were a green light to sell it. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, let's take a look at uh, some of the impact this is having uh, because obviously there are those that benefit from the weaker shilling and those uh, that don't yeah. on the agricultural front. Of course, uh, as exporters, we've got uh, those exporters benefiting. How are you viewing the tea players right now? Well, I'm very bullish about tea. Tea prices at the Nairobi, the tea counters at the Nairobi Stock Exchange have, had, have been in a retracement, but I think you're going to get a slew of results in March which are going to be extremely strong notwithstanding this recent weakness we've seen in the last four to six weeks post-Egypt. So I'm bullish about those. I mean, you've got price earnings ratios of two and a half to three. I've got so many private equity funds coming in looking at price earnings ratios from eight to ten. There is no reason for these shares to be so cheap, but they need a catalyst. 
And I think we'll see that beginning to happen in the, over the next few months. Which is looking like the most lucrative bet if you had to stock pick within that sector right now, Alikhan? Yeah. I'd probably, you know, the big issue with a lot of these counters is the fact that you're a minority shareholder, so you've got to be cognizant of the majority shareholder and their behavioral patterns, some of whom have not behaved with, uh, with the type of uh, level I would like. So I would pick something like Williamson T. It's, it's a majority owned by George Williamson. It's trading on a price earnings ratio trailing of 2.2 forward of about 2.5. And, and I just think you, you've got practically no risk in this. You can just sit tight and basically get your money back within two and a half years if nothing else happens. On the flip side, let's look at some of those mm. in distress manufacturers. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, many would be saying, uh, would be uh, feeling some of the brunt in this regard. Absolutely. I think manufacturers are going to feel the brunt two ways. They're going to feel it from a higher input costs from fuel. They're going to see it from the workforce now looking for probably uh, inflationary in salary increases to keep up with the cost of living which has spiked because of food prices and fuel etc. So I think there's going to be a few problems around that sector and that's why you saw quite a bit of weakness uh, in the first, in first quarter of this year. However, having said that, we've got some very interesting manufacturing companies which I would look at to buy on dips and, uh, and, and still stay focused on that. But you know, the, the, the landscape for the mm. manufacturers is not what it was last year. Let's look at a cement manufacturer in particular. Mm. We've heard rumorings that Ati River Mining uh, was out with numbers late yesterday afternoon. I haven't managed to find that data mm. anywhere. Has that surfaced? I haven't seen that either. I, mean, I, I don't think it's been released, but it should be released any moment now. It should have been released before 9.30 when the market opened. Uh, Arthur River Mining is trading on about 23, 24 price earnings ratio, but you know their execution has been flawless. They continue to expand. They're going to have a huge cement capacity for the region just at the right time. And there is somebody maneuvering onto that share register. If you look at the volumes over the last six months, there are multiple of what they've been before, and they keep, the, the buyer keeps coming back. So I think there's something that Arthur River might well be in play. And Pradeep said words to that effect last year in New York. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be chatting to the Deputy MD Surendra Bhatia a little later this afternoon on Power Lunch. Ali Khan, we know that you've been pretty positive on the Ati River mm. mining story. If there's any concern around Ati River mining right now, what would it be? Well, I, I think, you know, it, it, uh, my concern is, is not that great around them. I think it's a rich price. I mean, you're buying something at a P of 20 plus, and I think that's always expensive. But, you know, Pradeep manages, he's the biggest shareholder, he manages his share price very well, and I'm not too concerned about uh, execution there. So on balance, actually, I would say, look, I don't have any big overriding concern.